Frank and Lou co-hosted the inaugural Laguna Seca Challenge on April 6th and 7th, 1991. It's been the unofficial start of the riding season here in the Northern Hemisphere ever since. 33 years later, the Sea Otter Classic is considered the world's largest cycling festival, drawing nearly 10,000 professionals and amateur athletes and 74,000 fans. For the past five years, Bowhead has been coming to Sea Otter in different forms. We've been embraced by the mountain bike community over the years and gone from the weird bike on the fringe to garnering acceptance and being embraced by industry partners. So it's interesting because it's kind of like when you get the, the seeds and you plant the little seeds and then you sort of slowly watch it, a little green sprout come out of the ground and then eventually it blossoms, right? And I think that what was exciting about the whole thing was to be part of that like planting of the seed and honestly, I think the success that Bowhead's had at Sea Otter is completely attributable to Bowhead because you you built it, you, you brought the athletes, you brought the amazing product. Like the number of people that I talked to who were around your booth saying, I can't believe those bikes, I can't believe the lean, I can't believe the technology, right? I mean, you, you built it and it was an honor to be part of that, to see it start and help it grow, right? And, and, and see where we are today. And really, I just feel like Sea Otter's just grown with, with Bowhead and Bowhead's grown with Sea Otter. There's never been a pushback, like the entering a race. It's like, yeah, you can, yes, it's just the answer over and over, which is a really, it, it's counter to what we're sort of used to hearing. First of all, it makes me sad that you hear that at all because it should always be yes and it should always be a partnership. And I think what has made Sea Otter successful right from the get-go is the attitude of all the people involved, right? Like I wish I could have Jeff Frost here talking about it from a race director standpoint because, you know, I give him huge credit for his uh, embracing the adaptive category. And whenever I've reached out to him to say, hey, you need to talk to these guys because, you know, we can't, we never assume that we know how to do it perfectly, right? And the fact that he's like, yeah, I'm ready to jump on a call. Let's do it. Let's have that conversation. It's saying, let me learn from you. Give me the op, you know, give me the opportunity to know how we can make it better. And that's the whole sea otter attitude, right? And so when I went to, you know, my team to say, hey, this is what we really need to do. And this is the why behind why we need this additional space. Everyone was like, absolutely, we need to do that. And, you know, how can we make it better for them? And, hey, you know, it's like the expansion of the adaptive um, parking this year. So we went from, you know, back in the day, we had just that little row. And then, you know, one of the very first things that my boss, Frank Johannan, who, who started this event 33 years ago, said at our meeting was, it's not enough. We need more. You know, we need to make this event so accessible and so welcoming. And, and that's... That attitude, me, but the whole team that puts together Sea Otter is what makes Sea Otter, I think, a welcoming place for everyone and very inclusive, but it's particularly, I think, what's given our program together so much momentum. No, they, they said it was a, a barbecue and a race and a couple of tents. Really? Yeah, and it was funny because we were talking the other night and I said, well, it's kind of still a barbecue and a race with a couple of tents. <laughs> It's just a really, really large number of tents. <laughs> Big barbecue. 20 years from now, what's the adaptive space look like? Well, you know, it, it's interesting because, you know, Sea Otter was, became part of the Lifetime family and we have the capacity to expand this to many of Lifetime's other racing events. So first of all, that, that excites me, right? Let's take what we're doing at Sea Otter and let's replicate it um, across the, the lifetime portfolio. So that's exciting. And then second of all, I think 20 years, what it's gonna look like is, is what is needed. Because what's neat about Sea Otter and, and Lifetime is how responsive they are, right? And we're listening. And listening is a kind of a rare quality these days. We don't assume, we listen. And I'm gonna keep listening and everyone's gonna keep listening. And, and what we wanna do is, is just respond, you know, in the best way possible to how it's changing and evolving and growing. Just like this year when you were like, we're gonna bring so many more athletes, you know, we're gonna have a bigger presence, this is what we need. 
and we respond and, and provide that. So I think the future looks like what is what is needed by the adaptive community and, and, and we'll just respond in kind. I think you started something pretty special. It was like coming around the corner and there's just people like in, bo in adaptive bikes, wheelchairs, kids that are meeting their heroes in their adaptive bikes. It was really cool. And that's what makes Sea Otter special because ultimately it's not about Sea Otter, it's not about Bowhead, it's about the community, it's about the people, right? And it's about the joy that happens when the community comes together. And that's what I saw this weekend and it was amazing. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the opportunity. No, All right, you guys, one last time, let me hear you cheer. I did not know those were there because they're black.